Hello to this new video of mine where I'm going to show you how I create my new short videos for different resolutions. I'm creating square format for Twitter and I'm creating portrait format videos for TikTok and YouTube shorts. In this video I'm going to show you how I do it. Alright, so first we need to talk about the resolution. The current one, by the way, I'm using here a Mac app called EasyRes. You can see the current one which I'm using is this one here. Of course, this looks now fine to me, but if we want to record something like this for a video, then this will be way too small for everybody watching. So a good idea is to change your resolution to a lower one. Of course, you could also change just the font size of your IDE, maybe. This could work, but the issue is that everything else still is way too small. For example, if you switch to another app, if you show something from your Mac menu bar, something like that, or maybe some pop-ups of your IDE are still a different font size, so I always prefer to change the resolution because this way everything will have the exact same size that we want it to be. And basically I've seen two options here. The first one, which also Jeffrey Way and Laracasts often recommend is this one, 1280 by 720. So this way everything is really big enough for you to read. And the other one, which I currently use is this one, 1920 by 1080. So this way everything is a little bit smaller than with this one but it's still um, big enough for everybody to read. Still, you have to be very careful here. You can see I have this div um, two times resolution. So this means even if I'm recording this, we still end up with a 4K video. So everything will be super sharp. This is very important. Okay, let's change this. All right, you can already see that everything here is way bigger and this is good. Then the next thing that we have to talk about is how do we resize our IDE? Do we go full screen? Do we leave something here in the back, some nice background? Yeah, so the way that I do it currently is I have here, I'm using Ray as an app for um, productivity. And yeah, here I have my own script command called resize app for my short recordings, for, for my short videos with some space above. So this brings in here my IDE in the center of the window and we have some space above. So the idea about this is that with the space above, what we get here of this portion is a 9 by 16 ratio. So that's the ratio that you need for videos like YouTube Shorts or TikTok videos. So and I already know that I want to put my camera up here on top of the IDE and in the end I want to have a 9 by 16 video. So this is why I'm going to end up like this. I'm going to add a link to the description of the video for the script for Raycast, which I think is um, pretty cool. All right, next we can also talk about the background. So I'm always recording full screen, even though I just need this portion. I'm even recording full screen and I have here an application, Unsplash Wallpapers, which I just use for my wallpapers. And mostly I'm going to look for something which also fits for my videos and mostly not interest into um, beach, editorial not as well. Mostly I'm interested in textures. All right, set this, try it again. And yeah, this is a little bit better. We want to look for something that looks cool, um, but it's not too distracting. So a little bit blurry like this. Yeah, so this is a good one. Let's use this one. Um, in the end, when I'm cutting my video, I'm going to cut out here everything on the outside of my video. So this means I'm not going to use this right away, but I'm going to save this for later so that I can use it when I'm going to edit the video. All right, let me check here. So we've changed the resolution. We have now our IDE in the, in the right um, position of the window. And we also talked about the background, background. So now we are ready and prepared to do the recording. For that, I use an application called ScreenFlow. Let's open this up. I'm currently recording, so I'm not going to start a new one here, but I just want to show this. Starting a new recording, mostly with my screen then, with um, my microphone and with the camera. So that's what I'm using. Then I'm just going to start recording everything that I need. All right, I'm inside ScreenFlow here. I have my two layers, or actually we have three of them. We have my camera, we have the audio, and we have the screen recording. But first I'm always going to start already by changing the document size. And since for Twitter I'm going to use a square format, I'm going to change this here to use the biggest square I can use of the current resolution. 
And then later we're going to change it for the portrait format. All right, next thing, I'm always going to clap at the beginning so that I can sync the video and the audio because you can see here, here happens the audio and the clapping starts actually here. So this means I'm going to shift this just a little bit and this will be enough so that you don't see it while recording. Okay, next I'm going to change here some settings for the audio. I've selected the whole audio and I want to smooth the audio levels and I want to remove the background noise. All right, that's good. And next I'm going to start editing. So let's see, mostly I have three parts here, the beginning, the intro, then I have the middle tile and then I have the end tile. So I need to find the best versions of those different sections. So let's see, what's this? This is already from the middle part, so I'm looking for the intro. Yeah, so this is the last intro, which I did, so I probably can remove everything before that. And let's make a cut after it. And now let's look for the one for the middle part. And I think I've done it here a few times. Yeah, I think that's the last one. Yeah, this is the one. Let's get rid of everything before that. Let's make a cut after that. And I'm already looking for now for the end part and I think this should be the last one. Yeah, it is. So this means all the other takes here before, I can see that they look very similar. So this means they are probably me trying the same part a few times. Let's get rid of them. Let's also make a cut here at the end and now we have a rough cut of our video which currently is a little bit about one minute. I'm always aiming for one minute because that's the limit for TikTok. All right, here's one part which we don't need. Okay. Next, before I go into detail, I have now my three parts and for those, I also have a different layout every time. Let's start here with the camera of the intro. Here, I'm always going to use the camera at a kind of almost full screen at the beginning just to show me presenting what I'm going to do. And in ScreenFlow, I have here some custom presets, which I created myself. So here I want to have a short, for a short video, square camera big. All right, this already looks good. I also know that I don't need the IDE. So this means we also get rid of the background here, but I also have this already in the project. So let's bring this in here. Here it is. Let's put this here at the bottom. And let's also arrange this for the whole video because we're going to need it again. All right, now we also need to arrange it here to fill up the whole screen. Let's see, it can be a little bit blurry. I have no issue with that. I think this looks good. All right, next up is now the middle part here. Here we want the different layer. And of course I have here some Presets again for the camera, I want it to be on the side. Yeah, like this one. And for the IDE, I want it to be also on the side, square editor side like this. You can see this way I have already arranged the camera and the IDE for how I want it for my videos. And this will save you a lot of time. So check out screen flow and how to do presets because this will be very useful. Okay, and then at the end again, it's similar like the beginning we want the camera to be big we don't have an ide we have the background here again all right i think this looks good now of course i would go through the whole video again maybe cut out some little spaces let me show an example of where i make some breaks because that's how i tend to talk and make make some little breaks here and there let's check out this one yeah so this means i can do some cuts in here. Even if you're showing your camera, it's not a big issue because it doesn't look that bad. Yeah, and I would go through the whole section and maybe here as well. And I need to take a look what I'm doing. Oh, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, so this is also a good one. Um, where we can get rid here of this little background noise. This was now a little bit too harsh. So maybe just get rid of a smaller 
amount here. Yeah, I think that's fine, especially for a one minute video, which is very fast paced. So I think that's working for this as well. All right, but yeah, I would go through everything a little bit more and make some little changes here, there, but basically that's about it for how I create this video for Twitter in the square format. All right, so let's imagine I have exported this one and now I want to create another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this now as another one. V2 because I already tried to record this video a month ago, but it didn't work out well. So this is not a second time that I tried this. So if you see this, this is good for me. And now we're going to change the document size again. So for YouTube Shorts and TikTok, I'm using the exact format, which is 180 by, yeah, like this one. All right, and you can see we don't have much space here. So how do we do this? Again, of course, I have here some shortcuts prepared to make this a little bit easier. So let's start here with the intro, short portrait camera big. And you can see I have another shortcut here. The camera is still big, but now in a more portrait mode. This is nice. Let's also do this for the end here. Portrait camera mo mode, this looks good. All right, next we have those here. So let's try this out as well. And here I have one, let's see, portrait camera on top, like this one. Let me just check if it's working for all of them because sometimes we have some issues here with the presets with screen flow, but this time it seems this worked. And also here for the IDE, editor button, is it this one? Let me see, I have a few of them. Oh yeah, this looks better now. I think that's how I want it to be. By the way, perfect <laughs> freezing phase here of myself. Yeah, let's use this one. All right, so now we have for the portrait format, still big here. Then for the video itself, for TikTok, it's important that you have some space at the button and the top. And I don't care if there is some text or buttons above my camera because most important is this part here in the middle. So this works for the whole middle part. And then for the end, we have the big part here again where I'm going to uh, make an outro for this video. And yeah, that's basically how I do my videos. Now I would just export the video like this and use it for TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Maybe I'm going to add at the end a logo of mine for my Mastering PHP Storm course because I'm always mentioning this at the end. But basically that's it. And yeah, I hope I could help you with your videos as well. Again, this is not the perfect flow yet for my videos, but it's the best that I found currently. But I'm pretty sure it will improve over time. And thanks for watching. Have fun creating amazing videos yourself. Hello, friends of PHP Storm. Today I'm going to show you another shortcut, which I'm using a lot lately, especially for my live presentations. So while live coding here, for example, I'm going to create a new podcast for a test. I'm going to use a factory and let's create it like this. And it often gives me just the full namespace here of the model. And it's not a big issue, but while live coding everything like this is a little bit distracting. So I want to get rid of this as soon as possible. Of course, I can use the context action here to clean up the code or qualify or replace the qualifier with an import. But of course there is a nice shortcut and the one which I'm using a lot here is the silent code cleanup. So I write the line, I hit the shortcut and of course I'm back here without the namespace anymore. It's important here and I can move on with the code. It's just a simple shortcut, but I use it all the time and maybe it's useful for you too. So give it a look. If you want to learn more about PHP Storm, check out my video course, Mastering PHP Storm. Hello friends of PHP Storm. Today I'm going to show you another shortcut which I'm using a lot lately, especially for my live presentations. So while live coding here, for example, I'm going to create a new podcast for a test. I'm going to use a factory and let's create it like this. And it often gives me just the full namespace here of the model. And it's not a big issue, but while live coding everything like this, is a little bit distracting, so I want to get rid of this as soon as possible. Of course, I can use the context action here to clean up the code or, or replace the qualifier with an import, 
But of course, there is a nice shortcut and the one which I'm using a lot here is the silent code cleanup. So I write the line, I hit the shortcut and of course I'm back here without the namespace anymore and I can move on with the code. It's just a simple shortcut, but I use it all the time and maybe it's useful for you too, so give it a look. If you want to learn more about PHPStorm, check out my video course, Mastering PHPStorm.